Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, we're going to be talking about Dancer in Final Fantasy XI. Now, the point of this video actually isn't to talk about XI at all, but it's to give people a precursor of what to expect from the job in Final Fantasy XIV. Dancer was revealed as one of the two new jobs coming to the next expansion, Shadowbringers, and so people just have a lot of questions. You know, obviously XI and XIV aren't really going to be relatable to each other in this one regard, considering that Dancer in this game is a melee support-oriented job, while in Final Fantasy XIV, it's going to be a ranged physical DPS that does focus on throwing weapons, but also on dances to buff allies. So I figured, let's at least talk about some of the skills, maybe we'll recognize some of them when Final Fantasy XIV comes around, and we can actually even talk a little bit about it in maybe one or two of the other games, as I do have a few expectations myself. Now apologies, I am doing this video all in one take, I am actually playing on my own character on the live servers, and as such I probably will fumble over my words without actually doing a retake, so apologies for that in advance. So as I mentioned earlier, Dancer in Final Fantasy XI is a melee-oriented support. I like to say it's kind of akin to a red mage, it's a jack-of-all-trades and a master of none, able to heal, tank, uh debuff, buff, basically capable of a little bit of everything, but not really being a master in any of them. Now, the job itself focuses on using the resource TP in order to perform the majority of those dances. Now, in 14, we're actually getting rid of TP, so I doubt we'll really be able to relate any of this, but it's part of what led to the expectation that Dancer could maybe be a melee-oriented healer in 14 before the official job reveal actually came out. Now, looking through some of the various job abilities, um, ones that we'll generally ignore are things that lower the TP cost of dances and steps, as well as uh, their other one-hour abilities. We're basically not looking at their grand, what they're going to do, because uh, odds are we won't have to see much of these, but at least keep in mind the skills Trance and Grandpa, because we may be seeing these skills in 14, maybe even in a different form. They do like to reuse the names of lots of skills. Now, Dancer has a ton of skills because it's pretty much equipped for all scenarios. The big thing with Dancer is to use those to use their TP in order to generate a resource called Steps. Now, Steps, you can say, are a lot like uh, combo points on Rogue in World of Warcraft. When you perform these steps, you'll generate these combo points and then be able to execute finishing moves with them. Some dancers just rely on the TP. Some dancers rely on these finishing moves in order to actually perform them. Now, I know that a little bit of that is being covered up by this in the bottom left corner so i'm actually going to move that since that's just where the uh, the abilities are going to go yeah, let's let's move it up a little bit more that way it at least covers the chat log for anyone who doesn't want to you know i don't want anyone seeing anything that people might be talking about my link shells and whatnot so anyway uh let's start from the top of what the actual dancer dances are in final fantasy 11. so first we have our sambas now sambas are persistent buffs that exist on the dancer that basically apply a debuff to an enemy now once that debuff is applied by constantly hitting the enemy then everyone attacking that enemy actually gets the effect of the samba so for example we have drain samba which causes a drain daze on the enemy meaning everyone attacking them gets health back with every hit asper does the same thing but returns mp to all attacking on every hit and haste will provide the haste buff to everyone hitting it so what we're actually going to do right here i've got a few enemies lined up so we can actually see this and i'm going to use some of my other skills uh once you get to the higher levels you're actually able to generate finishing moves in more creative ways one of them is with an ability called no foot rise as you can see that instantly generates me three you can see the debuffs the tiny little debuffs it's the second one on the right uh in the top left and then we're going to use those, we're going to use one of our finishing moves, Reverse Flourish, and this will actually give us some TP to start off with right away. That way we can actually uh, start the battle with this Haste Samba. Now, in case you're wondering who these are, these are Trusts, another thing coming to Final Fantasy XI. Uh, I have them out here, and they're basically just going to be providing me with buffs and healing in case anything should go wrong. So, you can see I get the Haste Samba, and it applies this buff that lasts just about a minute and a half to two minutes. Now, whenever I hit an enemy, it's going to apply the Haste Daze, and with that Haste Daze, uh, I'm going to be able to... You're going to see, like, a little effect triggering. So, you can see that little, like, that ding, ding that's coming. It looks like we're going to have some friends for this fight. Not that I'm all too concerned. And that effect is the one that we're kind of looking out for. Let me just make quick work of all these guys. Maybe go to a different spot so I don't have to fight four mobs every time. 
Actually, I guess now that I have that uh, Haste Samba going, while I'm killing these guys, we can start going over some of the other skills. Now, probably the skill that made people think it could be a healer in Final Fantasy XIV, if it was going to fit that role, which it won't be, is their waltzes. Waltzes are basically a series of curative dances that the dancer can actually perform. They have Curing Waltz, which is a single target cure. They have Divine Waltz, which is an AoE cure. And then they have Healing Waltz, which removes debuffs. So if you see I use my Curing Waltz 5 right here, It'll actually consume 800 of my technique points and perform a fairly powerful heal on myself. Now, obviously, I wasn't missing a lot of health, but a lot of people thought that that's probably the thing Dancer was known for best back in the day when it first released. Yes, there's the Hay Samba and the Drain Samba, but a lot of people used to use it as a sub job in this game in order to actually get access to those waltzes and use their TP while soloing in order to stay alive longer. So that's definitely one of the main driving forces that people had to think, oh, this can definitely be a melee healer in Final Fantasy XIV. That's probably the direction they'll go for it. It didn't end up working out that way, but it was at least one of the tools that made sense. Now, jigs are a more utility-oriented thing, and they're mostly based on movement. Spectral jig allows you to avoid enemies, so you saw that, you know, all four of those enemies just kind of walked up on me after I started fighting the first one, and these enemies would probably start attacking me as I walked by. Spectral jig basically allows me to go invisible, and it allows me to be undetectable by sound. Chocobo jig is movement speed for myself, and Chocobo jig 2 is movement speed for my entire party. Uh, Spectral Jig and Chocobo Jig are used very frequently, although the jigs themselves do have quite the long cooldown. But you can see if I use Spectral Jig, I go invisible. Don't worry about the trust. They ain't going to aggro anything. And then I can walk right by this. Now, it doesn't work on every enemy, but it's going to work in this particular case because these monsters, if anything, would aggro by sound. So now that I've safely avoided that, let's go over to the corner and talk about the next one, the actual steps. Now, steps are debuffs that you place on the enemy, and they're meant to be placed somewhat frequently. They're your main way of accessing finishing moves and can be combined with other attacks in order to get to your flourishes or your finishing attacks a little bit faster. Quick step lowers evasion, box step lowers target defense, uh, stutter step lowers target magic resistance, and feather step lowers a target's critical hit evasion, making it so you're basically more likely to land critical hits. Now, if anything, what I'm expecting with Final Fantasy XIV's Dancer, it's really in the Samba and step territory where I, I kind of expect the job to fall. I expect to have at least a handful of these types of skills in order to um, act as the more supporty range. You know, that's kind of what the ranged physical role is in Final Fantasy XIV. It sacrifices a little, a little bit of damage compared to the other jobs and roles uh, in exchange for being able to do massive boosts for the party. You know, Bard providing critical hit rate, uh, damage reduction, uh, damage dealt increase to enemies, uh, direct hit, max HP, all sorts of things. And I expect that Dancer will probably follow very much in suit. So uh, basically, if I start fighting one of these enemies and we'll pull one. Now, I was going to use a ranged attack, but I think I, I don't think I should. Uh, a lot of people might be wondering why Dancer has throwing chakrams in Final Fantasy XIV. Now, I don't have the item with me right now, but one of the most prominent uh, ranged weapons in Final Fantasy... Is this actually considered a chakram? I don't think it is. One of the most uh, prominent weapons for Dancer in Final Fantasy XI is their throwing chakram. In fact, uh, the artifact quest, which, re which rewards you with a level 40 artifact weapon, is actually called the War Hoop in Final Fantasy XI, and it is a throwing chakram. So no doubt that the Dancer uh, artifact weapons in fourteen will probably be called War Hoops as well. If not, one of the weapons will probably be called War Hoops. Now, because this thing walked a little bit closer... Uh, I can actually buff my steps with the Presto skill, which will cause me to generate additional finishing moves. So now I can go immediately to 5. Uh, there is the ability to get more than that, but I don't have the skills available. Now with those 5 steps, we have access to 3 tiers of flourishes. Now basically, flourishes are grouped into these 3 separate pairings. And with that, it'd probably be nice if I actually made it so you guys could see the entire thing the whole time. It's too bad that it like kind of defaults to the bottom left there. Okay, there we go. Um, I can always change the settings so that way the dialog box doesn't actually go down at any point. So you can see we have Flourish 1. Now this gives you access to a few support-oriented ones. Animated Flourish is a Provoke, so it's a more tank-oriented skill. Uh, Desperate Flourish allows you to kite enemies by weighing them down. And Violent Flourish has a chance of stunning enemies, which is definitely one of the more popular things to do with it. Now, the Tier 2 Flourishes, which still use finishing moves, but are just a different grouping. So, these three basically will share somewhat of a cooldown. They'll at least put Flourish 2 on cooldown. And these will put Flourish 1 on cooldown. Uh, Flourish 2 is really where you start to see some more 
um, offense-oriented stuff. Reverse Flourish has a mix of offensive and defensive utility in that it converts your finishing moves into TP. You saw me do this earlier in the video after activating No Foot Rise to get some extra finishing moves outside of combat. And this is a very popular tool, obviously, by feeding yourself more TP. You can give yourself enough to you know, heal yourself in a pinch. You can use it to activate your weapon skills, and you can use it to activate more steps. Building Flourish will enhance the potency of the next weapon skills, so pretty straightforward. And this will ready a target for a skill chain. Readying for a skill chain, not something we're likely to see in 14. It's a very Final Fantasy XI oriented mechanic, but just making mention of it. Now, for Tier 3 Flourishes, you have what are basically considered uh, high-tier, high-impact Flourishes. Uh, these come with a much longer cooldown, where you odds are will not never activate more than one while the other one is still available, and the effects they offer are great. Now, Climactic Flourish uh, allows you to deal critical hits. Basically, it increases your critical hit rate by a fairly substantial amount. Uh, Striking Flourish allows you to deliver two attacks. Your next attack will hit twice, and, turn and Ternary Flourish will cause your next attack to hit three times. And all of these have different costs. They can cost at least one finishing move. They can cost exactly one or two finishing moves. So it's all about managing your finishing moves, applying those debuffs with your steps, and trying to make sure that you're setting yourself up for uh, the most damage or support that you can possibly offer. So you know, going, I guess, to an enemy, uh, looking at my macros at the top, which will basically be acting as my hotbar. Um, if I activate this, this is the critical flourish. It'll consume all five of those steps. And now I've got this one minute critical hit rate buff, but that flourish is now on cooldown. So now I can't really use my tier three flourishes. So what should I do? Well, I do have enough TP to do a weapon skill. So let's do a really weak one. Just do that really quick. And then I can immediately use my finishing moves again and do another weapon skill. So you can see that it constantly kind of feeds me TP. I killed the enemy before I could do that. Even, even Wasp Sting against these beginner level, like, I don't even think these things are, yeah, these things are incredibly easy prey. These, like, basic level 99 enemies don't stand a chance against that kind of stuff, even the weaker weapon skills. But you can see that it's constantly about getting those finishing moves. Uh, Presto allows me to generate those extra finishing moves fairly often, so I'm able to, I guess, kind of go through my flourishes with relative ease, or at least keep some um, nearby. <laughs> Looks like we're going to be keeping a few of them nearby, because we've got some friends right here. Let's, uh, let me make quick work of these real quick. Now, they do have some other supportive skills. Uh, they have, of course, I mentioned their one-hour skills, Grandpa, as well as Trance, which um, can allow them to activate... Uh, Grandpa actually allows you to activate flourishes without the need to uh, expend any finishing moves. So it can be great for spamming flourishes in very quick succession. And then you have Trance, which causes the cost of my dances and steps to be zero, so I can basically function infinitely with my dances, uh, with my healing in particular. Trance plus the Curing Waltz basically means it's resourceless healing, um, at least at a minimum for a short period of time. Now, going back down here, we have other skills as well. We have Presto, which I mentioned earlier. We also have Contradance, which also buffs your waltzes. You know, it buffs your healing capabilities. Um, now, for some of them, it simply buffs the potency. So, for example, if we were to do Contradance, and then we were to use... We were to use uh, Curing Waltz, 5. You can see that... Uh, doesn't really do a whole lot different. You know, I'm at, I'm at almost full health, so it really only heals for 209. But that's one of the effects. It, it enhances that. Now, if I were to use that on Healing Waltz, it would make it an AoE Asuna, pretty much. So there's all sorts of different things that it's capable of. Finally, when you hit level 75, you can get two abilities called Saber Dance and Fan Dance. These are basically a tank stance and a DPS stance. Fan Dance reduces physical damage taken and increases your enmity, but renders Sambas, one of your dances, unusable. So you can't use those Haste Sambas or Drain Sambas while you're in this mode. Um, also, that uh, the dance gradually wears off, so you will gradually begin to take more damage as the duration goes. Saber Dance increases your double attack rate, but renders Waltzes, so your healing it renders unusable. Um, and then that double attack rate gradually decreases. So you're seeing me just kind of mow through these enemies. I can mow through them even faster with Saber Dance. Now, I don't think in Final Fantasy XIV they'll have, you know, Saber Dance and Fan Dance. And maybe they will, but maybe they'll function a little bit differently. Um, they probably won't have a Tank Stance as a ranged physical. So if they do have Fan Dance, it'll probably operate in some sort of other capacity. But Dancer, as you can see, it has all sorts of options available to it. Um, and it has a little bit of basis in things that we're seeing in Final Fantasy XIV. Of course, the throwing chakrams, the dances, the supportive tools. And those we'll be seeing along with the ranged DPS that the job's actually going to be doing. Now, I've heard some people ask, you know, what I think the dancer limit break will be. In 14, that's basically one of your party tools that, in the case of a ranged physical, 
is a line AOE uh, burst attack that consumes an entire limit break gauge, in this case a tier 3. I think the biggest candidate is probably Blade Dance or Sword Dance, depending on what name they want to go with. I know what you're thinking, technically Dancer doesn't have a sword, but that's never stopped them from dancing with them in the past. Uh, Blade Dance is probably a little bit closer, probably the more likely title, because even a Chakram is a bladed object, so it makes a little more sense. Um, it's just one of their more popular skills from the previous games, Blade Dance. Uh, it's a giant AoE that just does a ton of damage. I'm even playing Chocobo Mystery Dungeon right now, and that is one of the ultimate skills that the Dancer has, is Blade Dance. Immensely powerful. So, those are some things that you can know about Dancer. There are some other things that are very Final Fantasy XI specific that we could talk about. But hopefully I've managed to give you a little bit of insight as to how Dancer functioned in Final Fantasy XI. And some skills you may want to be looking out for when it releases in at the end of June for Early Access. And of course July 2nd for the official launch of Final Fantasy XIV's next expansion, Shadowbringers. If any questions about Dancer, you want to talk about Dancer, reminisce about Dancer in XI. If you're someone played it ages ago, feel free to do that in the comment section of the video below. We'll probably be doing a much shorter shorter version of this explanation in a bestiary focus around Dancer, as we will be covering the job from the other games in the series, where you'll see kind of similar to this, it's a jack of all trades. Some games it's a little more focused on damage, some games it's a little more focused on support, but there's all sorts of things to talk about, so we'll just have, you'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, I will see you all in the next one, and until then, take care.